Anyway, welcome back, folks. Great to have you. Here is uh, Wolf Blitzer. You know, this really irritates him. In fact, let me precede this. Nope, I'll play the bite first, and I'll do it with, a, with an antecedent. This is uh, Wolf Blitzer, CNN This Afternoon, and uh, talking about uh, Trump with one of his correspondents, Joe Johns. And they uh, they have an exchange here about Trump and what he gets away with saying and all that's pretty explanatory here it is he did the other day before the debate say that cruz was a little bit of a maniac he used the word maniac and then he was criticized by rush limbaugh and trump himself later acknowledged joe that he was influenced i think that's the first time we heard donald trump acknowledge that he was influenced by the criticism he got for some of these conservative radio talk shows yeah and, and you almost never hear that from trump he's a never back down guy they're so livid they're upset. They can't make Trump back down. They can't cause Trump to say, to to change what they can't they can't affect any change in Trump whatsoever. And it bugs them that they think Trump changed his tune toward Cruz because of me on this program. And who knows whether or not that's the case, but they think it is. Now, a little observation here. 2015 truth. The two Republicans, let, let's just, let me just put something out there if I might. The two Republicans that I have commented upon most favorably happen to be what? The leaders in the Republican primary, Trump and Cruz. Now they can take plenty of credit for where they are and they deserve it all. Don't misunderstand here. But there can be no doubt that they have benefited from talk radio, from El Rushbo. Establishment candidates have no traction. And here we are. We're up in the final days before we get to the actual votes being cast, first in the Hawkeye Caucus in New Hampshire. And I think it's fascinating because we've had pieces written over the years about how the Republican Party needs to forget what talk radio is about. Talk radio is an albatross around the Republican Party's neck. Remember Obama in his second week in office, 2009, brings the congressional leadership of both parties. And he tells Boehner and the guys, you, you got to stop listening to Rush Limbaugh. That's not how things get done here in Washington. You got to you got to forget that. you got to stop listening to people like that. And the Republican Party itself, over the years, has had, well, not the party, but there have been, I don't want to mention any names because I really don't want to credit people or give them any publicity, but there have been numerous supposed conservative writers and commentators who have also suggested that talk radio, that's... That's part of the problem the Republican Party has. And I just find it interesting that the two guys leading the Republican Party primary happen to be two guys who have been fairly commented upon and supported here on this program. It's also interesting, I think, that neither Trump nor Cruz are afraid of the media. They will engage anybody at the drop of a hat. They will accept every invitation. You can't, you can't turn on TV and you don't see Trump. It seems like he's accepting every invitation. Cruz, too. They're not afraid of the media. Happy warriors, whatever you want to call them, they are out there and they're mixing it up. And they will engage at the drop of a hat. Equally as interesting is Hillary Clinton. She never makes herself available to the media. And the media hates Republicans. She couldn't have a more friendly support group, and she won't get anywhere near them. She has to be dragged, kicking and screaming into a press conference. And they do everything they can to shape the media so that it's practically a support group rather than a bunch of journalists. She's leaving a significant advantage on the table because she cannot connect with voters. She doesn't want to demonstrate she has no way of connecting with voters. In her own mind, she's too way above people. The voters are the little people. And in Hillary's mind, in Hillary's world, it's an insult that she even has to campaign. But nobody's found a way around it yet. 
so she does it as little as possible. Her personality is off-putting. Her policies don't make Americans feel safe, so they've made the calculation, let's keep her hidden. The more bathroom breaks during debates, the better. McCain and Romney. McCain and Romney hid from talk radio. McCain and Romney wanted no part. Romney would come by here. I'll give you. Romney would come by here. He came by here a total of two or three times during the campaign for 45 minutes to an hour. And he would sound to me like the, 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 well, the most severe conservative, as in his words, I've ever heard. And he would leave here and he would go to a fundraiser right down the street and not even mention he was here. He's too embarrassed to mention he had been here. Wouldn't dare do it. McCain, Romney ran from talk radio, didn't want to be touched by it, didn't want to seem to be too close to it. Cruz and Trump, the exact opposite, and look at them. They're not afraid of the media. They will engage at the drop of a hat. In other words, they're not playing it safe like Hillary is. And they're not following what they think conventional wisdom is. They've, they've blown through the idea that that talk radio is a stepchild or is somehow harmful. And instead, they are uh, profiting from it, using it, unafraid of it, whatever. Hillary's strategy is to craft and protect a phony image while riding Obama's coattails. And Obama doesn't even have any. He's got Iran. He's got Obamacare. He's got the border. He's got terrorism. He's got, you know, people wondering, who the hell is he? You know, what is his really... What is his agenda, really? This is a transformation of this country that Obama has begun will haunt Hillary Clinton, not help her. So I just, these little observations here that you uh, can't miss, can't avoid making. So it's, it, to me, it's just another set of things, if you will, that the mainstream Republican Party has at its disposal but refuses to learn from it, profit from it, or what have you. And don't miss, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's any kind of a relationship here. I'm just pointing out the obvious. They just have a disdain. The party leadership does apparently just have a disdain for their, uh, for their base.